On to bonus question number two here on Hockey Inside Out. Joel Edmondson and Yoel Armia are in the horizon by coming back to the line sooner than later. Rick, who is the odd men out once these two stalwarts come back into the lineup for the Montreal Canadiens? Well, I don't want to be cruel and, and you know, hoping that Joel or Mia takes his time in coming back, but uh, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> there's, there's, there's there's a number of there's a number of guys uh, ahead of him um, that probably won't happen, and we're probably going to. Uh, it's going to be an interesting decision on what they're going to do uh, up front. I mean, uh, uh, Drew you know, we talked about Drew I don't think they can necessarily pull him out uh, with the risk of, of losing him if, if uh, uh, you know, if they make a change with Armia. So on the blue line, uh, you know, you got Matheson in, in the works. Edmondson obviously going to uh, be a, a huge bonus, but uh you're going to have to look at uh, Kovacevic uh, on D. And even, you know, uh, once they get healthy back there, I'm not sure about Weidman, uh, you know, holding his spot. So uh, it, it's going to be, uh, I guess, somewhat of a good thing is they're, they've got enough depth in, in that position that can move guys in and out de- depending on injury. But uh, th- those are the names that uh, I think the, will, will be in the discussion. Yeah, I think Kovacevic's the first guy who's going to go out. I mean, there's reasons why he was placed on waivers by Winnipeg. Uh, the game against Minnesota, he had a bad play where he came up along the boards. He had an easy chip along the boards, safe play. He threw a backhand pass up the middle, picked off, resulted in a goal going the other way. Um, I think Weidman, you know, once Matheson comes back, he's probably the second guy who's going to be sitting up. But when they signed Weidman, that was one of the reasons they signed him. Is his, I think he's almost as a seventh defenseman. They know he's a good veteran. He's a good guy in the room. He won't mind being made a healthy scratch. But I think Kovacevic at this point is probably the, the number one guy to go out on forward. I mean, Drew Wayne, he's, you know, he's been working harder than he has in the past. There's things aren't happening for him. I don't think they're going to sit him out there because I think they'd still hope to get something for him. Maybe at the trade deadline, I think maybe Rem Pitlick is the guy who comes out since he's already been a healthy scratch uh, earlier this season. Now, Michael Pozzetta at some point, they either need to get him in the lineup or send them to Laval to play. He has a healthy scratch right through the first seven games. At this point, I think he needs to go play somewhere if they're not going to play him here. Uh, but, you know, it's a, you know, St. Louis has been asked about it already, but as he said, a lot can change until that happens too. Like, it'd be more injuries coming up and, and whatnot. But uh, as you said, Rick, with the old army, uh, I don't think <laughs> – I almost haven't even noticed that he hasn't been playing. <laughs> it's, it's, sort of, it's too many nights when he does play where you don't notice him. Uh, yeah. But maybe he'll change that when he comes back, but, but we'll see. But I think Pitlick uh, up front is probably the most likely guy to sit up. Yeah, poor UL Armia. I, f- I feel like we have to remember that last year is not the UL Armia that we've always seen, uh, especially in the first half last year before St. Louis took over. That was a shade of the player that he usually is. Obviously, his scoring is inconsistent but usually also a stalwart defensive player good four checker does good things on the ice that help his team go and i thought in preseason we saw that you all armia late in the season last year we saw that shades of that uh, you all armia come back so if he comes back and he is still that great defensive player who is physical and you know can chip in a goal here and there i think rem pit like is an easy guy to take out i think mike hoffman could sit i know he had a pretty good game against minnesota but there are a lot of games where Mike Hoffman does one good play and then <clears throat> I go to compliment him and he makes 15 bad plays. <laughs> so I, I think that's a guy that you can sit out, even though they probably want to build his value and trade him. He hasn't been able to come through on the opportunities that they've given him to build his value. So at some point you got to see who else can fill those spots on defense. I actually disagree about Kovacevic. He's actually leading the Canadians by essentially every single metric on defense this year. And I know he's not taking the tough minutes that Gooley and Savard are, but uh, him and Harris have been arguably the best pairing on the team this year. I don't think you want to mess with that. I think Chris Weidman is the obvious guy to sit, but uh, Joel Edmondson, I don't know. I, I think when he comes back, it might end up forcing a trade. I know he's an assistant captain on this team, but I don't know if you want to really take out any of these rookies. I think that they're, getting a lot of valuable time to work towards the future. Him and David Savard, I don't know how long they have places on this team. Of course, you want some veterans, but I think the veterans have been the worst defensemen on the team so far this year. 
And judging by, uh, you know, when Edmondson came back last year and Edmondson's career without Jeff Petrie, he's not going to be an amazing player. I think Mike Matheson is the guy that's going to come back and force uh, somebody out of the lineup. But I don't know how much you really want to get uh, Savard and Edmondson into the lineup down the stretch. Well, Edmondson, I don't think with all the back issues he's had, I mean, he missed, what, 54 games last year and now out again with the back. I don't think he's tradable until he shows he can actually stay healthy for an extended period. Now, we're talking about Yul Armia, though. I mean, the best hockey he played was the Stanley Cup final when he was on that fourth line with Eric Stahl and Corey Perry. That's how he got the contract. I wonder if Corey Perry threatened him. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't skate and work hard, I'm going to stick you, never mind what the other team's going to do to you. But uh, the, the the old army we saw during that Stanley Cup run, boy, if he could do that on a regular basis, what a what a bonus he'd be for this team. And, you, you know, you forgot to mention the name Dandenoff, uh, a, a guy that might be, you know, yeah. a guy that you could pull out of there that is not doing it uh, after seven games if you want to talk about points and stuff. Um, yeah, so it's it's uh, it's going to be interesting. They just they'll have to do the exercise and go. Okay, this this one's deserving. This one's not deserving. Try something uh, when they get into the point where guys are healthy. But um, that's that's not the case just yet. Yeah, Dadnov kind of looks like a rookie out there at times for me. Where he, you can tell he has talent, but it's like the brain's not functioning at the NHL level. And you know he can do it, but we haven't seen it this year. Dadnov's just slow. Uh, the game's too fast for him right now. I find he just he can't he can't keep up uh, with the pace of today's NHL age. Catches up to everybody, right? Well, it's a it's a matrix here for the Montreal Canadiens and what they have to do for their lineup in the coming weeks and months once these veterans come back. And we'll find out. Perhaps there could be a trade in the future for one of these guys who might be up in the Bell Center booth eating hot dogs with uh, Rick, Stu, and Andrew and I at some point. Who knows? But that'll do it for us here on this bonus edition of. Hockey Inside Out. Don't forget to like and subscribe our YouTube page. And also subscribe to the MontrealGazette.com slash newsletter for Hockey Inside Out information. And for full episodes and bonus content, go check out Hockey Inside Out. And finally, leave us your questions or comments. We'll get to it in the future episodes of Hockey Inside Out. That'll do it for now on the bonus round. Bye for now. Bye for now.